Okay, on to some transition metal chemistry now. Um, so, electronic configuration of cobalt as the element is going to be a 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, uh, 3d7. When you go to the plus 3 oxidation state, you lose your 4s, you lose 1 from your 3d, so it would be 3d6. Uh, different, another property is they form coloured compounds, also catalysts. What's the meaning of the term ligand? It donates an electron to the metal ion. So it donates, sorry, it donates an electron pair to a metal ion. Uh, put this one then, um, some chemistry of cobalt 2 plus. We actually say the hydroxide is going to form cobalt hydroxide um, as a solid and the type of reaction is it is of course a precipitation reaction. Uh, reaction concentrates ATL, it forms that species, the type of reaction is going to be ligand substitution because it substituted the high, uh, water ligands for chloride ligands. Oh, right, so this is an interesting one. They want me to um, draw these diagrams for possible structures. The key thing to look at, don't worry about that, look at this one. This is a formula of the complex. So um, this, is, this is a table of, so for A, it's going to be surrounded by six ammonia ligands. Always make sure that the atom that donates the electron pair is near the bottom, in this case it's nitrogen. For B, you've got five ammonias, so you can just put five around your cobalt, and you've got one chloride, like so. And for C, uh, hopefully you see it's the same formula, so you've got two different uh, stereoisomers, you can have the Cl trans to each other, like so, or you could have them cis to each other, like so. Okay, the next question, um, I'll leave this up on the board because uh, it's quite, quite interesting to have. It tells me that these complexes reacted with silver nitrate. Now, think back to AS chemistry. Silver nitrate reacts with chloride ions to give me silver chloride. So that precipitate is going to be from silver reacting with these chloride ions. These chlorides are bound to the metal for, through um, coordinate bonding. So it's these guys that are going to react. So the first thing you can work out is you can work out your moles of AgCl formed. They told you it has 2.868 grams. The molar mass of silver chloride is 143.4. That comes to 0.02. Now they tell you in the question that 0.01 mole of complex reacts. So, complex to Cl minus is 0.01 to 0.02 or 1 to 2. So for every one complex there must be two pre-chlorides that could react and therefore it was B because there were two chloride ions there. Okay, um, what's the difference between um, a strong acid and a weak acid? A strong acid fully dissociates in solution, a weak acid only partially dissociates in solution. Um, right, an expression for Ka for nitrous acid. So Ka H plus NO2 minus over H NO2. Calculate the pH nitrous acid. Now, our nitrous acid is a weak acid. It's given me Ka, so the first thing I have to work out is my concentration of hydronite, which is Ka times concentration, and take the square root of that. If you do that, it's 4.43 times 10 to the minus 
0.375 square rooted. If that comes to 0.0129, and then your pH is minus log to the base 10 of that number, which comes to 1.89. Uh, let's see what it is, two decimal places. Uh, right, Schultz says that his base equilibrium set up with nitric acid mixed with nitrous acid, completely equation. So this may confuse you because you've got two acids. However, that one is a strong acid. That boy is weak. So in that case, he is going to be the acid and he is going to be the base. So if he's the acid, that will lose the H plus to become NO3 minus. So that therefore is base one. That's going to accept our hydrogen ion to become H2NO2 plus and then he therefore becomes acid 2, right? So, so those two are linked and those two. Always make sure that the ones you've linked together differ by an H plus. Uh, okay, so what's meant by a bronsted Lowry base is um, a proton donor, sorry, a pro yeah, uh, sorry, a proton acceptor. Um, Calculate the pH of calcium hydroxide uh, solution. So the easiest way I think to do this is to work out your pOH. But hang on a minute. Uh, if you notice, for every one calcium hydroxide, I get two OH minus ions from that. So the concentration of OH minus is actually going to be 0 0.08 moles per decimeter cubed. If you then work out your pOH, which is minus log to the base 10 of the concentration of OH, minus log to the base 10 of 0 0.08, that I reckon comes to 1.10, and then your pH is just equal to 40 minus 1.10, which is 12.90. Again, that one you've just got to watch out for because they're in two decimal places as well. A uh, nice little equation to finish with. Um, so I've got nitrous acid reacting with calcium hydroxide. Um, it's an acid and a base. It's going to give you a salt plus water like so. Um, and you're going to need two of those and you'll make two waters. It's a neutralisation reaction between an acid and an alkali to give you water, so that therefore is your ionic equation. Oh right, so we've got a nice buffer question now. Um, carbonic acid is in our blood. It's a mixture of carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate ions. Um, so explain how this acts as a buffer. So I've got the um, buffer up on the board. The key thing you need to explain is if you add small amounts of OH minus, so OH minus added, this H plus will react with the OH minus to give you water and the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to replace the OH, sorry, the uh, H plus that I used up. If I add H plus, HCO3 minus reacts with it. HCO3 minus plus H plus goes to H2CO3 and therefore the equilibrium shifts to the left hand side to remove it. Okay, so it's buffer calculation time. Um, so let's have a look at this. Healthy blood has a pH of 7.4 and has that hydrogen carbonate carbonic acid ratio. Patients in Mr. Hospital with pH blood as 7.2. Calculate the ratio in the patient's blood. 
Okay, so I don't know Ka, which I need to be able to work out. So Ka, we know, is the concentration of H plus over the concentration of hydrogen carbonate. Sorry, times the concentration of hydrogen carbonate over uh, carb the concentration of carbonic acid. Um, now, they told me the pH is 7.4. So I can work out the concentration of H plus as equal 10 to the minus 7.4. If I do that, it should come to 3.981 times 10 to the minus 3. And they've also told me the ratio of hydrogen carbonate to carbonic acid is 10.5. So I could do that. And if you do that calculation, you will find Ka as equal to 4.18 times 10 to the minus 7. Ka doesn't change. But I can now use that with my new pH. So if I bum that in again, so if I do the same equation, Now I'm going to put in my pH. So if I now work out concentration of H plus using my new pH, which is 7.2, that comes to 6.31 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay, so um, I've still got that ratio. I know what Ka is. Ka is 4.18 times 10 to the minus 7, uh, which I've worked out here. So uh, you can rearrange that as that ratio, carb uh, hydrogen carbonate to carbonic acid is equal to 4.18 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 6.31 times 10 to the minus 8. And hopefully, if you do that, you end up with your answer being 6.6 .6 over 1.